Hey, hey, all you beautiful people, Mike Carroll here, Mr. Utah Real Estate. Thank you again for joining me on today's podcast. And today I have with me a special guest. This is Heather Sparks. Yes. Uh, Heather has been, he's, she's one of the team members here at Top Equity. And kind of give us a little bit of background of your experience in real estate. Well, I started in 2001. So I've been in real estate for 22 years. So I've seen a lot. Um, and during seven years of that, I actually owned a mortgage company that was in 12 states. So I ran a lot of loan officers. I've been through the crash of the 08 and um, stayed true to real estate. And I've seen a lot of the ups and downs. So lots of experience in real estate. Been here for, been doing this for quite a while. Right. Today we want to talk about the grant programs that are out there. You live in Davis County. Right. And Davis County has a great grant program right now. Yes. Maybe we can, uh, you can tell us a little bit more about this grant program. Right. So right now we're seeing a lot of fear in the market, right, from buyers um, with interest rates, with the house cost uh, affordability has gone up so much in the recession. And we have a lot of people that are kind of afraid of what to do, or maybe they don't know some options out there for them. So I do live in Davis County. I do focus on that area a lot. And Davis County has rolled out a $50,000 uh, program. It's not necessarily a grant. It is a loan. I mean, I want people to be aware, but there is no payment during the time that you have it. Um, so what it is, is income-based. It's, it's geared towards people that are lower income or moderate income. Um, and you can qualify for up to fifty thousand um, dollars to kind of give an so example. The fifty, real quick, the fifty thousand is that the total purchase price, or is that the loan amount? The, the amount that they're going to give you. The county is going to give you this money, and this money can be used to buy down your interest rate. It can be used to pay fifty percent of your down payment or fifty percent of your closing costs. And they do have an income scale to kind of give an example. A family of four can't make over eighty-five thousand one hundred dollars. So it is a sliding scale. They just rolled out the program October sixteenth, so it is brand new. Um, and this isn't to be confused with the Salt Lake, uh, the state, the Salt Lake County um, grant, which is twenty thousand. That grant program is available to first-time home buyers, or you have to have gone three years and not owned a home. And it has to be new construction on that program. The Davis County grant is not new construction. Oh, let me kind of back up. On that Salt Lake County grant also, you cannot buy more than 450000 So it has to be new construction under 450000 the Davis County Grant's a little different. You can buy a single family home, you can buy a condo, you can buy a town home. It does not need to be new construction, but it does need to be up to 500,000. So you can go in and you can actually stack these two programs on top of each other if you were um, buying new construction, because you still gotta follow the guidelines of the 450 and the new construction if you stack it or you can just go straight to the Davis County program. So to not be afraid of what the interest rates are right now, I mean, that $50,000 can be used to buy down that interest rate to where you feel comfortable with the payment. Can you use the full 50000 to buy down the whole rate? Yeah, there is a qualification, so it's up to 50000 There is a sliding scale on it. And it's a really easy program to apply for. So you have to have a fully executed real estate purchase contract. And you have to have the lender that you're using. And the lender is actually the one that submits the information to the county. Because they also need to see your income documentation. They want to see your assets. Like you would qualify for a loan, mm -hmm. they're also making sure. And that's the lender which where the is, lender comes which is in. standard. Right. Um, and then they also have some debt to income ratio guidelines. This is following a HUD guideline. So HUD makes the rules, not the county. Um, and the, the front end ratio, when you're talking debt to income ratio, front end ratio on this loan is 35%, meaning that the house that you qualify for, the payment, the interest rate, taxes and insurance, everything included, cannot be more than 35% of your gross income. 
and then they have a back-end ratio of 50%. Back-end ratio means that now the house payment, including consumer debt, car payments, credit cards, student loans, all of that, can't be more than 50% of your gross um, monthly income. And that's something that you can sit down with the lender and lender right. will go over the, all that, all your numbers for you. So yes. You don't necessarily, the buyer no, doesn't necessarily they don't need to, to do know that. all that. No. Sit down with the lender, right. run all your numbers, look at it, see what you qualify for. And the grant is a great program because you can use this money, to, you know, let's and you can break it up. You don't have to pick just one thing. So let's say you got $50,000, you could use part of that money to buy down the interest rate, and then the rest of it you could use towards 50% of your down payment and 50% of your closing costs. And then there is no payment while you live in that loan or live in that house. They do charge a 1% interest rate, but let's say you live in the house for 15 years and you decide to sell the home, that's when it would get paid back. So it comes out of either refinance or the sale of the property. That's how they get their money back. But it's a great program to help people get in. And Davis County, you know, is the fourth largest county in our state. And we've got Hill Air Force Base. We just got a lot of new tech jobs mm -hmm. that are moving. And they're really trying to relocate people into that county to feed the jobs and the workforce there. And so there are programs out there, a lot of different programs, but I haven't seen one that's $50,000. Yeah, that's a great program. And, and I know buyers right now, you're concerned about rates being high. You know, it is a great time for buyers right now because uh, the sellers are leaving their homes on the market longer. So not only could you use that $50,000 grant, you can also ask the seller to contribute. Right. So they could buy down a rate. You could use some of that money to buy it down even more. Right. Use it for closing costs, use it for down payments. So, so many great programs right now for buyers. Buyers are scared right now of the rates, but it is a great time. You've got, you've got all, the buyers have all the leverage right now. Well, I think, you know, the world has kind of been in a freeze since we went through the COVID, right? And every time that we're just about ready to get out of being fearful, something else happens. You know, the economy goes down, the, we've got the interest rates that rose up, we've got, you know, wars going on right now. And so people get really scared. And we have a tendency when we don't know what to do, we just do what the Joneses did, right? Mm -hmm. And so if someone else is scared, then I need to be scared. But there are so many books and so much information out there on how to make money in real estate. And... Everybody will tell you who takes advantage of this that when the market is down or when there is fear or when that is happening, that is the best time to go out and buy because you're going to get your home for a lower cost. You're going to get money that you can put towards buying the interest rate down. You can get your closing cost paid. You can make um, offers on homes. You can go through the home with a fine tooth comb. You can ask sellers to help fix things. This is the time to buy. When everybody else is hiding out, you step out, you come to a professional who actually knows the tricks and they, they can lead you down and they can show you all of the ways that you can take advantage in the market because just a couple years ago, there was not an advantage. No. There was It was terrible. And we're we're seeing the repercussions of people getting into homes, waiving home inspections, a waiving due diligence period. And I think another thing that people don't understand is that when home prices go up, and as soon as the interest rates drop, right, we're going to see everybody's like on a, a start line, and they're all going to run. And when you are in a national housing shortage, you're going to wind up with um, multiple offers on properties right. again. And I think what people don't understand is that when you start bidding on a home and it goes above, say, what that home appraises for, 20000 30000 40000 that money is out of your pocket. I think people think you can roll that into your loan and you can... The house is worth five hundred thousand, and you get it for five thirty. That the lender is going to give you five hundred thirty thousand dollars to buy that home. 
No. So now only now are you coming up with all of your down payment. Nobody's helping you. Nobody's helping you with your closing costs. Now you all that money that you go above uh, appraised value and bid comes out of your pocket too. Right. And I saw a lot of people that were trying to buy when the interest rates were low, a lot of my clients that actually had to pull out because they didn't have the cash to play the game. Right. So when we went through that, it was cash buyers that were swiping up all the properties. And I remember selling the property for 55000 over asking right. price. Not even, they didn't even look at the place. They submitted a blind offer. They, everyone else, that was it. They were done. And the only thing that they were happy about is that they got a low interest rate, right? right? So I'm not understanding where people really are thinking that's the best way to purchase homes because I've been doing real estate in a long time and that was the most craziest time I've ever seen. And you know, when you really when you really look at the people that follow the industry, that are experts in the industry, they are saying that the interest rates will come back down. Are we going to see 2% again? No, no, probably never. So when they say come back down, they're anticipating 5, 5.5%, five which is a very normal market. Normal and I market. like selling real estate in normal yeah. markets, you know. I don't feel like people are getting taken advantage of. And people get to not waive due diligence and get into a home and then six months later find out everything fell apart or stuff that they didn't realize was wrong with the home. So when that interest rate, and they're, they're kind of guessing the second quarter of next year. So you have a window of opportunity right now before those rates come down. And it is a, such an easy streamlined refinance to just lower that interest rate and lower that payment that you are able to keep so much cash in your pocket, say from a sell of a home or what you've saved up. And right now, there's a lot of houses out there that the affordable houses might need some paint. They might need mm -hmm. some carpet. They might need... Put your own know, personal touches on yeah, them. Yeah, and you have that cash that you're not having to spend, you know, because you are allowing the seller to do it, the builder to do it, the grant programs to do it. And there's also zero down payment loans for right. lenders. So there's so many ways you can save money on the actual purchase part of it bring down that interest rate, and then when it, when the rates do come down, refi back into it. So. Right. And I do a lot of, um, you know, interior design, too, and I have for a while, but there is a real big shortage of land. And there's a lot of shortage for where builders are building, you know, some of these subdivisions and that. And so we're almost forced into not buying new construction you know, an older home. <clears throat> and then we've got to go in there and people have a vision of what they they see their dream home to be. And they're looking for that. And they're usually leaning towards new construction because it looks new, it's pretty. But with someone like a realtor with, like myself that has a little bit of an interior design background and I've gone through, you know, getting building permits and variances and things on my own homes, and I've flipped and turned five of my own properties and remodeled them. So when you are looking at a home, it's nice to have a realtor that's got a little vision. You know, I know this is what you're looking for, but we could open up this. We could create an open concept here. We can get, you know, new vinyl floors through here, a paint job of white, like the new construction homes. And keeping that money and being able to put your personal touch and create that home as a dream home because sometimes people get overwhelmed. They don't know what they can do in a home. Mm -hmm. So to have a little mm -hmm. guidance, and, I, and I've helped a lot of people do that. Well, you know, talking about new construction, uh -huh. um, and I, I, I get clients all the time, like, I would rather have new construction because it's brand new, like you said. Right. A lot of times what they don't realize is new construction, your landscaping's not done. Yes. You've got to put your own grass in, you got to put your own sprinkler system in, you got to put your own fencing in. A lot of times basements aren't even finished. So with these programs, you would have that extra money to do your landscaping or finish yes. your base if new construction is what you want. Absolutely. And people don't realize how much that is. And, uh, you know, selling new construction over this last little couple, like year, 
Uh, builders are offering a lot of incentives. They are. But what I'm also seeing is they're taking away some stuff, too. Like you said, the landscaping or, or the um, sprinkling system mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So you're getting into the home, but there's a lot of things that fall on, on yeah. your shoulders to do. And you don't want to be that person in the neighborhood who's the last one to put their grass right. in. You know, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when it comes to new construction, there's a lot of different things versus an already built home. My preference is the already built home. It's right. Like you got new mature landscaping and all that, but everyone has their own taste. So, but then if you do get into new construction, talk to us and we'll guide you through that process as well. Right. That 50,000 grand program in Davis, let's really quickly touch on the 20,000 grand program we have here in Salt Lake County right. for the new construction. Right. So the $20,000 grant program that's offered in Salt Lake County, um, they've allotted, you know, an X amount of dollars <clears throat> that they're going to lend. So once that money's gone, it's gone. Um, right now, it's still available. There's still money out there. Um, people aren't necessarily aware of it, <clears throat> but the lenders are the ones, again, that's going to have to apply for that. But that program, you definitely have to be um, first-time home buyer or not owned to own home in three years. And it has to be new construction and it can't be over 450,000, which sometimes can be hard to find. Mm -hmm. So you've kind of got to look outside the box and find that, but it's all of Salt Lake County. So new construction, does it also include townhomes? Yes, yes, condos, townhomes, or single family. So you, you know, a little bit easier to find under 400 in the townhomes and the condos. Smaller families, Right, and again, that also can be used to buy down the interest rate or pay 50% towards closing costs or 50% towards down payment. And it is follows, follows an income restrictions as well. There is a sliding scale for it. 20,000 is 20,000. 20,000 is 20,000. Right. Yeah. And like you said, and then you can, on top of that, ask the seller right. to contribute. So you can take advantage of that. And, you know, Salt Lake, well, actually, it's not Salt Lake County. It's the state of Utah that's offering that. That's how that you can take that state program and stack it on Davis County. So you could buy, you could use that $20,000, whether you wanted to buy in Utah County, Salt Lake County, Tooele County. You can use it towards Davis County, Cache County, wherever. So if you're in Davis County, if you're looking at Davis County, you potentially have $70,000 $70, to use. $70,000. Plus, you can ask sellers to contribute. Um, right. so the, uh, you, there's zero down payment programs. There's so many different ways to really take advantage of all this money that's out there for buyers. Right. And Davis County is such an amazing place to live. You know, if you drive past Bountiful and you drive, you know, past Layton and you haven't gotten off the freeway, and drove through the streets of Davis County, you really should. Yeah. It's such a charming county. We still have that a little bit of that small town feel. You do still have the older looking main streets. I love that part. It's yeah. so fun. And you're just really tucked along the bench up mm -hmm. there. Um, great school systems. There, I like the fact that there's a lot of still mom and pop restaurants and stores and things to go to. And we're 10 minutes from Salt Lake. And, it's, and Lagoon's right there too. And Lagoon's right there. So- <laughs> You guys don't know what Lagoon is, Lagoon the amusement park for all right? the other staters. We got an amusement park right there, a great amusement park. Right, it's our little Disneyland. Yeah. Um, but there's so, there's so much growth that's been happening in Davis County too. Um, huge stores going in, malls. Um, we've got some really high-end restaurants that have gone in. Um, a lot of new development out there. Right, there is, but there's not a lot of um, place to do a lot of new construction in Davis County. So, but there are some amazing homes with some great views in Davis County because everything's kind of stacked upon the hill. Yeah. So a lot of houses have some great views. Really beautiful. And then if, if you're up on the hill, you got the, the view over the Great Salt Lake as well. So. Right. And homes are still pretty affordable in Davis County. So I would take advantage of this program, especially if you've been looking and you're getting a little frustrated at home costs or that or not finding, expand your search into Davis County. Talk to me. Um, let me help guide you down that road in getting that money and that grant program into Davis County. I, I know Davis County pretty much like the back of my hand. And that's why I asked you. Right, to right. And I think there are a lot of diamonds in the rough in there and a lot of great homes that... Um, 
people can snag up. So look for the location that you want. Look for the lot that you want. Look for the, um, the landscaping, the view, and then take advantage of the programs. Save some money in your pocket and go in and turn one of these little older homes. Love it back and turn it into, we can make it look just like a new construction home. Yeah. And, and be, I think they're built better. Yeah, it used to be we used to ask for price reductions, right? In a market like we have today, where homes are sitting a little bit longer in the market, buyers are going to ask for a price reduction. Don't do that. Ask for them to contribute to buy down your rate. You can get a lot more bang for the buck. Use the grant monies. Use uh, con uh, concessions from the sellers. Use the zero down payment programs. Look in Davis County because it's a great buyout in Davis County. Right. So, yeah. And for an example, kind of to touch on what you just said, you know, I ran some numbers the other day, and let's just use a $500,000 house. You know, to go in and offer $15,000 below, you know, um, offer price and get that house $15,000 only changes your payment $68 a month. Yeah. But if you took that $15,000 and you did a, like a two-month buy-down, it actually saves over $600 a month. Yeah. So taking that same amount of money and allocating it in a different way is definitely a smart way to go. That's why you come to the experts. Yes, yes. We know this stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's go. I mean, I think there's a lot of a lot of great programs out there, a lot of ways to get their, their interest rate spot down, a lot of ways to get into homes with no money down, and we are sitting in that window of opportunity. And, you know, no one really knows when the rates are going to come back down, but the experts are anticipating the second quarter of next year. And then I think it's going to be the wild, wild west again. Yeah, yeah. and that, like, like Heather said, when that does happen, when rates start to come down, if you're waiting for rates to come down, what's going to happen? It's going to be a feeding frenzy again. Right. You're going to have multiple buyers out there. You're going to be competing against buyers. You can't ask them to contribute now, the sellers to contribute, because they're going to have multiple offers coming at them again. And then what is that ultimately going to do? It's going to push the home prices even up higher. And, you know, there are some articles that are being written that if someone waits too long, they're, a home is going to be start becoming a luxury item. Right. And we're going to be priced out of homes. So... And, you know, and the other thing that I think that people don't think about is forward thinking of what that home creates as an asset and the equity. And as you start getting older and you start retiring, you know, we have a lot of people say Social Security is going to go away. We have a lot of things that we don't know. And I think that also people think, you know, Medicaid is going to be there or all of that for you as you're getting older. And it's really, you're going to have to count on that equity in your home. Yes. And, you know, I do a lot of work with assisted living as well. And we have to sell their home to pay for the assisted living. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And if you don't have those kind of funds as you get older and you don't start now, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, part of my retirement plan is, right. is my equity in my home. Yes. yes. And, and, and a lot of people ask, you know, I wait till the right time to buy. When's the right time to buy? I'm going to wait till the right time to buy. There is no right time. The right time is right now. Actually, oh, yeah. Because prices will continue to go up. You'll see your little ups and downs, but over the long term, it always goes up. Always. And we still have a lot of equity in our homes. I mean, people get panicked that, you know, maybe we've gone backwards just a small little bit over the last couple of years. We went up so drastically. And we, we gained a lot of equity. So we're kind of leveling out, but we didn't lose that equity that we gained over, you know, when prices went up. But And, and a lot of people want to think that this is the same thing as 2008. I'm telling you, I lived it firsthand. And back then in 08, there was no equity. Yeah. No one. Everybody was upside down because why we saw so many short sales and foreclosures, we couldn't even resell the home for what it was worth. It got pushed up and then it would drop. And we've slowly built that back up. And I've never seen over the last 20 years anything like that. And this is not the same animal. It's a whole different set of circumstances. Completely different. No, and a lot of misinformation out right. there. So I think we covered pretty good yes. different uh, grant programs and uh, how buyers are in the right place right now, right to, now. to get a good home. 
for not a lot of money out of your pocket. Right, take advantage of it. Don't let us tell you, I told you something. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Heather, for You're joining welcome. me thank tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys for uh, sitting in on this one. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up, the notification bell. I really appreciate it. And then uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.